There's been a lot of stuff about vitamin C. I think the biggest one is vitamin D3. Clearly not at a vitamin D3 level of 15, which is what you see a lot. You saw in one of the studies and the risk for COVID when you had that level of vitamin D3 was greatly increased. So more than anything else, please make sure that you have an acceptable level of vitamin D3. Now then the next question might be, well, what level of vitamin D3 do you recommend? I certainly recommend at least 40. Vitamin D3, it acts like a hormone more than a vitamin. It's something that's been around for decades. If you've heard of rickets, deficiencies in vitamin D3, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think I am. Deficiency in vitamin D3 cause rickets problems, which you see with problems with bones. So for the longest time, the topic around vitamin D3 was dead. But then it reawoke, came back up. It became a big deal. Gosh, over 10 years ago, some smart person started questioning vitamin D3. Now, if you start going into the science and the research behind vitamin D3, there's a lot of information about maybe decrease in vitamin D3 is associated with diabetes, sleep loss, depression, you name it. And some of that evidence is pretty strong. During the COVID outbreak, you started seeing it got to be much bigger than an issue of just, you know, crazy internet docs talking about this or crazy prevention people or that kind of folks. It got to be frontline large medical research institutions like Harvard, you know, some of the Mayo, some of the others. So the biggest concern I have, Martha, and I still see it, is a lot of people continuing through this pandemic. And let me just make one statement. You are going to get exposed to the SARS-CoV spike protein sooner or later. The vast majority, as in 95, 98% of us, are going to get exposed within the next few months if you haven't already been exposed. The question is, what do you want that SARS-CoV spike protein and the genetic material that makes it, we want it to be attached to? Anyhow, that's obviously my own perspective. The bottom line is, I would also say, what do you want your vitamin D3 level to be when that happens to you. Personally, I want my vitamin D3 level probably between 60 and 90. That's where we get into a lot of debate, a lot of discussion. Be careful about having too much vitamin D3. People say, well, vitamins are totally harmless. No, they're not. You can cause people have had significant problems up to including kidney and failure and death with too much vitamin D3. If you have questions about that, I've got videos on taking too much vitamin D3. So other people would say, well, what's the standard level that labs and other folks recommend? They say about 40. Why do you recommend 60 to 90, Brewer? Because of my review of the science and the evidence. Yeah, that's all really good, Brewer. You're getting way too deep in terms of the science and the evidence. What do you recommend that we do? I recommend that you take 5,000 international units of vitamin D3 and then get a blood study and find out what your level is. Then I personally recommend that you go between 60 and 90. Other standards would say at least 40. And then you can adjust your supplement level based on that. Now, how about the other supplements? Yes, there's some other supplements. I've seen stuff on vitamin C. There's some good, there's some not so good on that. I've seen stuff on plenty of others, most of which have already been mentioned today in the video. Why wait for a disease and hope for a cure? I used to be an ER doc. My name is Ford Brewer. I quit ER after a few years because it was just so frustrating. Most of the things bringing people into the ER are things that should have been prevented, including heart attack, stroke, number one cause of death, number one cause of permanent disability. People think that you're just gonna have those and that they're not predictable. Both of those are wrong. You, they are predictable and you don't have to have them. Usually it's lifestyle. Lifestyle is more important than supplements and even prescription drugs and even stents and surgery. But the current times are tough. Major financial impact with the lockdowns that most states have been going through. We've been working on a way to make this much more affordable with a subscription process. And that's exactly what we're announcing today. We've got two levels. One is the silver membership where you get access to our courses, a private webinar each month, and access to our supplement store, and supplement recommendations and prescription. Or I would suggest even more so, the gold membership. You can get a script for a Freestyle Libre and find out what your blood sugar metabolism's doing on a daily basis. 
and you can get a lab order for inflammation, OGTT, and insulin survey. You can also get a 30-minute one-on-one with me. So I'm looking forward to seeing you. Cost is no longer an excuse. So if you're interested, go to go.prevmedheartrest.com slash prevmed subscription or call us at 859-721-1414, 859-721-1414 or email us at myhealth at prevmedheartrest.com. Looking forward to seeing you. Thank you.